Hello my dear friends, this is Osama Shauki from Egypt and today I'm gonna share with you some of the solutions for troubleshooting during operative hysteroscopy. In this case, you have a turbid view and the resectoscope into one horn of a um, septate uterus. The problem is that the outflow channels, which is caudal and the inflow channels working in front failed so the inflow brings new water but the outflow is not working in that case you have to push just gently the whole sheath of the resectoscope going traveling toward the fundus and rotate the sheath clockwise and anti-clockwise to allow the draining channel the outflow channel to drain the turbid fluid it needs some patience and the very gentle movement is a few millimeters but if you keep the resectoscope in the same place it will be all the time turbid fluid the outflow is not working well and uh, you get frustrated not able to have nice view like this to complete the surgery okay so uh, i'm gonna give you a pose to enjoy septum release i don't call it septum incision or excision i call it septum release uh, because I have a theory about the embryology of the septum, the histopathology, and the nature of the septum. Back again to the procedure of septum release. Well, everybody knows that embryologically, we have been taught that septum results from failure of resorption of the midline septum during embryological fusion of the two malarian ducts. Two malarian ducts fuse together, and then the midline septum get absorbed or resorbed. Well, my dear friends, nothing comes from nothing, and nothing goes for nothing. In embryology, nothing disappears or vanish. It's a matter of tissue structural migration. Same like in the undescended testes, okay? It's in one location and migrate to other location. So my theory that what we call it embryologically septum absorption, it's just a migration of the fibers of that structure, the septum. Some fibers migrate anterior and some fibers migrate posteriorly and ends into incorporated into the wall of the uterus so what you call it septum as proved to be musculofibrous or predominantly muscles is part of the anterior and posterior wall of the uterus fused together in the center and the surgery by hysteroscopy is simply that you complete the unfinished job of embryology just when you cut the fibers retract as you nicely see in this view please uh, rewind back and observe again how when you move the electrode just touch you feel or you see obviously that the tissues retract anterior and posterior so that brings us now to the other controversial debate should we excise and remove the septum I do believe there is no need to do that. When you obviously look at that part of the video, you see that the septum scar is in the same level of the rest of the endometrium. Even uh, the endometrium is higher, which means the tissues of the septum that you cut have I wouldn't say disappeared, but retracted, snapped out like elastic fibers and jumped to go back to where it belongs into the anterior and the posterior wall of the uterus. So excision and removal of these fibers is actually uh, depriving the wall of the uterus from a supporting structure. Again, look at the endometrium here and look at the septum scar here. If there is no residual tissues which prove that there is no need to excise. I'm going to show more evidence by decreasing the fluid pressure now to allow the septal scar to collapse, to allow the uterine walls to fall down. You will see some bleeding like that, which means that the intrauterine pressure is low, but still there is no any bulging tissues. Again, I point to the endometrium and to the rest of the septum scar to show they're even on the same level 
but I can say that even the septal scar is lower at a lower level than the rest of the endometrium. So again, this confirms that there is no need to excise. Uh, we can disagree in opinion and everybody has to express his point of view. But at the end, we have to believe what we see with our eyes, which gives the conclusive evidence. Again, the end of septum surgery is completed satisfactory when you can see both tubal ostia at the same level. There is no any need for concomitant laparoscopy. My dear friends, thank you very much.